We're back with Marcus Allen Weldon, a good guy with a gun who got arrested after self-defense shooting. And here's a news story from before Marcus's verdict, just so we can all hear from the woman her, who he actually helped and her family. Family and friends of the so-called Santa Claus shooter are speaking out to set the record straight. Fox 2's Robin Murdoch with more on the effort to get his name cleared for good. He is not Santa Claus shooter doing anything negative. In fact, he is a super Santa protecting uh, a sister who was uh, in his care. It is a case of self-defense, not assault with intent to do murder. That is what the family and friends of 26-year-old Marcus Weldon hope prosecutors will see and act on. I'm glad I'm not at a funeral. Rather, I'm here trying to defend my son. At least he still has breath in his body. On Monday, those who know Weldon the best stood side by side to clear his name. He's out on bond after a shooting at this Detroit gas station on December 21st that sent two men to the hospital and Weldon and his co-worker running. If something happens and you know you're being threatened, you don't wait until you're dead. Yeah. to act. You just don't. You turn around and you run. And that's what we did. Erica Johnson says Weldon was helping to fix her tire when she was attacked by strangers. Then came an argument followed by shots fired from Weldon, who was licensed to carry a concealed weapon. The pair had just left a holiday party, so he was decked out as Santa. He was a hero. He was doing what any young man in his place would do. Walden's family members say he's a dedicated father, a man of faith who's working two jobs and last year even appeared as a model on Fox 2. A criminal he is not and they are not giving up. This brother is the epitome of positivity and so we are praying praying and begging that the prosecution would just drop these charges and, and, and call it for what it is. It was self-defense clear and cut just like that. Well, unfortunately, the prosecution didn't submit to their request, and you actually went right. to trial. So tell us about that. Yeah, I'm going to move to another area, Coley. I'm sorry about that. No, it you're like good. it's. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit of a better connection. Okay. Sorry about that. No, you're good. All right. All right. All right. So, so tell us about the trial. Well, the trial was uh, really dragged out. Like I said, it was. It turned out to be. Uh, I had. Well, at first I had to. It kept getting postponed, hmm. and it ended up be going about around uh, six, uh, 13 months. Oh, uh, right. It's an actual incident. Um, I had to pay for medical records to show that uh, that they were well, actually. They were trying to make me pay for medical records to show that they were actually intoxicated. Uh, we found that the clerk disappeared, but he left a statement on 911 saying that there was uh, two guns. He said that w one guy had his gun, the other guy got his gun, and it was a shootout. And he also said there was three shots that I fired and um, um, uh, two shots fired from the direction of the, the man who went to the car and got his gun. So we couldn't get that evidence put into to trial until uh, we found him, which we never did. He disappeared. Really? So, so to this day, they still hadn't found him? Hey, I haven't heard anything about it, you know, but uh, wow. luckily uh, I had to, you know, I had to, we, we, my attorney was able to get some of the evidence put in anyway mm -hmm. and was able to work his, you know, work that attorney magic. <laughs> so, so, so talk to me about, with respect to the gun, how were you able to uh, basically prove that there was another gun there? Um, and I know you, you kind of t hit on this a little bit by uh, talking about the clerk and, and he kind of cooperated your story that the, you know there was a second gun there was there any other evidence that you were able to use to get that in yeah there was a, a, a one of the forensic experts the gun experts uh, he said there was shell casings from a bullet found from another, that possibly could have been for another gun because mm -hmm. it was so destro destroyed he couldn't really tell um, and oh, I'm sorry, the actual bullet not the not the actual shell itself um, but the, uh, it was like, it was like one of those hollow points that just kind of got to kind of just destroyed. Okay. Gotcha. And it was also, it was also, uh, like I said, it was a, a written statement that the clerk made saying that it was two shots fired towards me, mm -hmm. a written statement that the officer took when he arrived at the scene. So I was able to get that, uh, cooperated with the officer. 
Um, and also, of course, Erica, Erica, she she said she she heard shots when she turned. She took off and ran, but she uh, in her original statement, she said that she heard shots. So that was another uh, hat tip to the actual. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. So it was uh, it was like kind of a putting a piece to the puzzle together. Uh huh. And the attorney pretty much had to we had to do some digging and digging and uh, see and point who was the aggressor and, and what evidence showed. That there was another shoot, another uh, uh, another gun. Gotcha. So now, with, with everything said and done, how, how are you dealing with things now? Um, you know, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm emotional, man. I, um, it's it's a lot to do with a mental psyche type deal. Mm -hmm. Um, like just before this interview, I had like a lot of, a lot of anxiety built up, and I kind of was contemplating, on honestly, kind of not doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was more so because of just the feet, you know, it, it's like reliving it over and over. It's starting yeah, to kind of wear yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just now starting to kind of feel that, you know, at first it was kind of, you know, I, it was all right. But now I'm like, man, it's, like every time I talk about this, it's just like draining me. Yeah. But, um, I, I have to save a life, man. You know what I mean? I feel like so many people are being prosecuted and, and, uh, and mis, mis prosecuted and, and there's a lot of evidence being withheld that shouldn't be. And that's something that I, if I can save a life, man, I feel like I've done my job. I mean, there's a lot of people in Detroit that are, are using their Second Amendment right and are getting prosecuted. I know a few of them. Really? And, you know, and uh, it's it's a, actually, you know, it's funny. I was looking at one of your videos a while back, and I know you had mentioned uh, so, uh, one of the street watching programs that New Era Detroit does. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of a one of a good friend of mine. He was just he just beat a case for uh, an, a malicious type of uh, prosecution over how he carried his firearm, and they tried to say he carried it wrong and he didn't have a CPL, but he ended up eventually was exonerated. But you know, and this is the type of stuff that goes on. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. It's unfortunate because I mean, you're, you're like I mean, you can just kind of tell by talking to you. You, you already have to deal with so much as it is. You got to deal with the emotional component. You got to deal with the the legal component. You got to deal with the financial component, and all of that just gets thrown onto you just like that. And, um, yeah. and like as if that's not enough, you know, you have to deal with overzealous prosecutors trying to run you through the system, um, which, which, which on the surface tend to pretty much looks like a pretty justified shoot. Um, and thank God that you had a, a, a pool of people in the jury who who believed you and agreed with you in that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad things worked out for you the way that they have. Uh, it's unfortunate that you have to go through this experience, but. Nonetheless, she's still here today. You're still here today. Um, and, and I think at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, and, and I just want to thank you for having the courage and bravery to do what you needed to do in order to protect her and to protect yourself. Yeah, I, I, well, I appreciate it, Nicole. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's one of those things, man. I, I, I don't really look at myself as necessarily, you know, Superman or a hero or anything. Yeah. But I can it is just a situation, that, a learning experience for other people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can learn from from your experience. But yeah. uh, but I think I, I do want to thank you exceedingly for sharing your story with us, because I, I, I know that it's a lot to kind of every time you tell it, you have to relive it. Um, and, yeah. and, I, and I've said it before. People don't realize this. You know, when people have to make that decision to to pull out their gun and use it in self-defense, it's going to be the worst day of their life. Um, and the best day in the sense of, you know, they're able to actually protect themselves. But I, I want to thank you for kind of having the courage and just taking an effort to, to share your story with us here today. It means a lot. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great seeing you, man. Like I said, I, I watch a lot of your videos, and uh, now that I'm really proactive more now, I, I kind of get a lot of my knowledge from you. So <laughs> I sit back and I, I listen to a lot of your stuff, man. And uh, when I seen you at the convention, it was yeah. like, there he is. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, but, uh, but, but thank you very much, man, and, and I hope you have a good one, man. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. And you know, keep in contact, man. I'm sure we'll see each other soon. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You take care. All right. Take care. Right. Thanks for joining us today on CN Live. We'll be back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern on NRA TV. I'm Coley on Noir, and I'm out.